Guys, welcome to SystemControlTech.com. I have had some questions from some viewers about some advanced level programming using the controller configuration tool. I'm going to do a couple of videos, at least two, maybe three, uh, that is going to demonstrate some advanced programming techniques. What we're going to do is actually create the logic blocks for a steam controller from scratch. I mean, we're starting with a completely blank slate. We're going to create the logic that enables the system. We're going to create the logic that controls the valve output. And we're going to put that into complete application. Here we are with the program opened up in controller configuration tool. And we're going to expand it a little bit. What we're going to do is add a uh, couple of points here under our uh, network inputs. And what we're going to add, we just right click and select new. And what we're going to add is going to be a floating input. We are going to need a uh, one of these for our uh, outside air lockout set point. So what we will do is simply highlight the uh, number here. You can see the zeros there and we just press the up arrow to one. And uh, if you need more, you can do that just by increasing the number. And then once you have the number of inputs that you're gonna add selected, you just hit next and it will populate that for you. Now I'm gonna double click in this or you can right click and select uh, view details. And we're going to name this and we're going to give it uh, just a unique name for what we're going to be using it for. Of course, this is going to be the set point to turn off the uh, steam system once we get it up and running. So we're just going to name this quickly here. And then once you get a name, press OK and simply close that out. Now we're going to need to uh, add some logic for the steam uh, valve control. So over here in our output control, we right click, select new, and this pop-up window here is where you can select a wide range of pre-configured uh, logic blocks for various applications. But what we're gonna be doing is, uh, once again, we're gonna be writing this from scratch. So what you want to look for within this drop-down window here is the one labeled hybrid. And you simply arrow up for the number of those you want to add, which we're just going to be adding one. Once you have that selected, you just hit next, and it will populate that for you. Now, what we're going to do is give it a quick name change. This is going to be our steam valve control logic. So we're going to change that to something that is easily recognizable. And I highly recommend that you name your uh, different sections of your program because if you ever have to go back and do any troubleshooting, it will make it much easier for you when you uh, name them uh, correctly. Now that we have that named, what we need to do is actually go in and view the logic. And you can see here, we're going to shrink this down just a little bit. Our, this is our logic block. You can see uh, this here, it's a two-state block currently, and that's how we're going to keep it. However, uh, which one of these you have highlighted, that is the section within this logic block that you're going to be working with. Since our first step is to write the logic we're going to use to enable this block, we are going to be working uh, with the state highlighted here. If you have it off, anything that you program under the off is what's going to happen when it is off. The same with the on. And for this, uh, you know, that, that state is critical. You need to make sure that you highlight the correct state in which you are working. So what we're going to do, we're going to highlight the heading of that. And we're going to bring up a couple of inputs. Now I want to show you something and why it is critical 
when you uh, select your inputs. Now you got to remember that there's a difference between uh, pulling inputs in from logic and pulling hardware inputs in. Now this one is one that you will not be able to connect your uh, hardware inputs to. And let me demonstrate what I'm talking about here. Just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to go ahead and name these. This, if I wanted to pull in, you know, pump one status, and I'm going to call the other one. We're going to go ahead and call it pump two status. But you're going to see in a moment that we will not be able to use this type of a, an input. This is a boolean input, and it is not going to work for what we need. Now I'm going to bring up my connection window and you can see here are those two points that we just created. I'm going to try to connect them. We want this looking at the pump status. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, I'm going to select make connection and you can see I do not have the pump status option in this pop-up window. That is because you cannot use the boolean input to grab a hardware input when you're working in your logging block. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go back and delete these two out and get the correct points for what we need. Now that we have those deleted, what we're going to do is we're actually going to go over here and grab the enumerated input. Uh, it is the second one down in this list. and we are going to label these for the particular input that we want to be looking at. Pump one status, I'm going to grab another one, I'm going to pull it over. This is going to be pump two status. And so we just add the label to it real quickly, that way it's easy to identify when we go to make our connections and if we ever have to come back and do any troubleshooting. Now then that we have those selected, I am going to come down in the connection tab here, right click make connection and here are our hardware inputs. So I'm going to select pump one for this one. It makes that connection there. Very nice and neat straight off of that hardware input. I'm going to go to the second one, right click make connection and grab that second input. Now this is the first part of what we do here. We are now connected to our pump statuses since we want to make sure that we have our pumps running before the steam system is enabled we are going to add some additional logic we're going to do a comparison we only need one of those pumps running uh, it does not have to be both pumps it just one of them so we're going to go over here in our drop down tab I'm going to select under the boolean logic I'm going to pull an OR gate over and I'm going to connect the status to these and you see that the system has automatically added a translator block for me. This needs to be an enumerated to boolean translation block uh, since we are going from a hardware input to a logic input. Once again, I'm going to grab that second status, and when I make the connection there, it automatically adds that translator for me. And that is something that is very handy, and now we have part of our logic here, but there's a few other things that we need to add. That's going to move this out of the way just a little bit, where we have a little more room to work. Another thing within this system is we do not want it to turn on and control the steam if we are running in summer mode. So we are going to pull over another enumerated block. We're going to call this summer winter. Now then, when you go into the details of this, if I right click select view and details, this is where you can set the specific type of a block that you're using. This drop down tab here, I'm going to go down and I'm actually going to select the summer winter option. If uh, you know, depending on what you're doing here, there's a bunch of options in this drop down tab, but for this block, we are going to be grabbing the summer winter. I mean, you can see that there's just quite a few ways. It really depends 
on the type of logic that you're going to be using. Now that I have that selected, we can see we have a default. You can set that to default whichever way you want it. I'm just going to leave it there. When I press apply and then I'm going to press close to close this window out. Okay, we're not done just yet. There are a few other things that we want to add. We want to ensure that the hot water system also goes down if we reach a uh, high temperature outside. If it gets warm enough outside, we don't need the hot water system. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to go in here and actually add a couple of more points. This one is going to be our outside air temperature. We're going to grab a second one, and this is going to be the set point, our outside air hot water lockout set point. So we're just going to put a quick name in here as well. And once you have it named, press the OK button, and here we are. Now we want to do a comparison between these two. If our outside air temperature is above that set point, we want it to turn the system off. So what we're going to do is go down and get the, under our comparator block, we're going to get a less than or equals to block. So we drag that over and then we make our connections. Our outside air temperature uh, let's bring it up just a little bit to where we can see a little more about what's going on. Our outside air temperature, we just hover in here, click, and we make our connection. You can see when I hover and click, you can see the option inside this block turns green. That lets you know that you can make the connection to that block. And this is, if you view the details of that particular logic block, you don't really see a lot in here. But uh, So now we're going to go in and add a few more pieces to this block. What we're going to need to do now is add a couple of AND gates because we need all of these things to happen before it enables our system. We want to ensure that we have pump status. We want to ensure that we have our system in winter mode and we also want to make sure that we are below the outside lockout set point. So I'm simply going to make my connections from these logic blocks. Once again, we see that it automatically added that translator for me. I'm going to go to that first AND gate, and we have these two here. I'm going to link these to the second AND gate, and just a click here and a click there. And we now have these connected. The next step is to connect this to our control. This is what is going to enable the logic block control for the steam valve. So I just click here and drag. It automatically puts that translator there for me again. And now what this will do when all of the criteria are met when our pump is on, when we're in winter mode, and when we are below the lockout set point, it will enable that system. Now, we're going to make a few more logic connections here. We have our summer winter. I'm going to right click, make connection. Here is our summer winter block. That's why you need to change your state text underneath that input so it will pull up the correct point. Now, same with our outside air temperature. Uh, I'm going to grab it. This is our hardware input uh, and uh, highlight it. Hit OK. And now we're also going to grab the set point. It, this is the value that we created in our network inputs earlier. I click that, hit OK. We now have all of the connections made. Now this is the first step in this process. This is the logic loop that will enable the steam valve control once all those systems are met. We will start writing the steam valve control in the next video. Guys, hope the video is useful to you. If you are not that familiar with the controller configuration tool, uh, you may want to check out a couple of my other videos where I give a little bit more demonstration of some of the basic techniques. And uh, anyways, guys, I appreciate you watching. Be sure to give me a thumbs up. Leave me any questions down below in the comments.
Be sure to subscribe for the latest updates, and thanks for watching.